got into some of the most competitive MD PhD programs across the country, and I'm proud to say that I'll be completing my medical training at Yale University, where I'll be spending the next seven to eight years studying medicine and pursuing a PhD in computational biology. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what it takes to get into the top five MD PhD programs across the world and how you too can achieve the same results that I did. We're talking Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Hopkins, and UCSF, the places where the next generations of physician scientists train. These programs often give you a full ride to medical school and will completely pay for your training. They'll give you a living stipend and they'll set you up for your career to do cutting edge research and medicine to intersect and build a future for all patients. So if you've ever dreamed about becoming a physician scientist at a world-class institution, stick around in this video and I'm gonna show you the entire application process, the interview stage, and the three key strategies that I use to maximize my chances at these programs. My name is Alessandro Hammond. I did my undergrad at Harvard. I'm now gonna be doing my MD PhD over at Yale and I spent years helping students trying to get into MD PhD programs, trying to get into top colleges. And if you wanna work with me, you can click the link in the description where I have my company with my co-founder Jack Anderson where we help students get into their dream school and get into top MD and MD PhD programs across the country. In short, when it comes to elite MD and MD PhD admissions, I know what it takes to win. MD PhD are fully funded programs funded by the NIH that train the next generation of physician scientists. This means that you'll complete both a medical degree and a PhD, usually spend about 78 years, but here's the kicker. It's fully funded, your tuition's cover, your living stipend's covered, and everything that you have to pay for is fully covered by the program. The end goal is to prepare leaders who can bridge the gap between science and medicine. People who will make discoveries in the lab and then bring those same discoveries to patients. But on the flip side, the program is intensely competitive. Most MD PhD programs have acceptance rates below 3%. But if you know how to position yourself, you'll have a real shot in the admissions game and you'll be able to get into your dream schools just like I did. MD PhD training usually takes about seven to eight years. It's structured in a really fascinating way. You start with the first one to two years being in med school classes, learning about basic anatomy and physiology, and then you'll transition to the third year to spend about three to five years in your PhD training. This will typically be in the lab where you'll be working towards a thesis. This thesis will then be something that you'll have to defend and then eventually need a thesis to then eventually graduate from the program. Some students fly by in six years, others take 10. And yes, that's a full decade of your life. So you have to be brutally honest with yourself and think about whether you love research, whether you love medicine, and whether you're ready to bridge discoveries in the lab and then take those to patients in the clinic. How do you actually get into MD PhD programs? Well, the number one thing they actually look for is research. Research, research, research. I think if you ask anybody, they'll tell you the very same answer. You'll need a lot of it. We're talking over 1500 hours of serious lab work. This is not just washing test tubes, but designing experiments, analyzing data, and even publishing papers. The number two thing you'll need is you'll need very strong stats, at least a 90th percentile on the MCAT and a GPA above 3.8. The third thing you'll need that's very important is a killer recommendation letter, especially from research mentors and even folks that are also physician scientists. Now the last part that you'll need is really strong essays, essays that can talk about your motivation. MD PhDs are very hard, you'll spend a lot of hours in the lab and they want someone that's been through very challenging efforts and has the ability to commit to this very long journey and is tenacious. But with an MD PhD application, you'll also have a significant research essay, which is a long essay that talks about every single research that you've ever done. But at the end of the day, you have to convince the committee that you're not just a med school applicant, but you have a deep interest in science and research. Many physician scientists will often go on to have their own labs and equally split their time between the research side of things and the practice side. Okay, now let's talk about the application process. So the first thing you'll want to do is obviously take your MCAT. The MCAT is a standardized medical exam that is composed of four main topics, biology, biochemistry, chemistry, physics, sociology, psychology, and critical reading and analysis. Once you do that and have achieved a really good score on that, you'll then want to have accumulation of all of your grades. Once you finish that, you'll then want to go through and complete the primary application of the AMCAS. This will take a lot of time to typically get processed, so I would recommend starting really early on. You'll then want to have accumulation of your most meaningful experiences. So for me, that was a big thing about research. So I spent a lot of time doing cancer research, doing oncology research, and being in a wet lab community where I was able to work a lot on both the dry lab side of things, multi-omics, and then translate those applications into patients in the clinic. The next thing is you really want to think about two to three research experiences that really show a future trajectory and are related to at least at some point what you might want to do after medical school. The next big thing is clinical exposure. Many applicants will come in with a lot of hours because this is really the number one predictor as to whether or not you're going to like this field. The idea is that if you've spent many hours doing research in this field, having clinical exposure, this might be something that you might be really interested in. The final thing you'll need is major awards or publications. Many successful applicants will come in having at least a few papers in mid to top tier journals. Um, and then also major awards. Fellowships like the Rhodes and Schwarzman can really help you out throughout the application process. One key tip that I will want to say is that you'll want to focus a lot less on roles or description and more on impact and metrics. For example, you don't want to just say that you worked in a neuroscience lab and instead say that you co-authored a paper in Nature Neuroscience and then presented it at a national conference. 
These are more tangible metrics that can let the admission committee understand how you are and what you do as an applicant. Now, you'll need between three to five strong recommendation letters. At least two of them should come from research mentors that can speak to you in detail about your scientific abilities. Again, focus on people that you know well, not just people with big titles. Committees care more about substance than status. And this is really important, but make sure your recommenders emphasize not only your intelligence, but your curiosity, your independence, and your persistence to research. Now, for essays, you'll have two main essays. Firstly, you'll have your AMCAS personal statement, which is your why medicine essay, and then you'll have your MD-PhD, which is why you want to pursue both degrees and why you need both degrees. Finally, you'll also have a significant research experience essay, which goes into detail about all of your projects. For the research essays, you'll want to explain your hypothesis, your methods, your results, and tangible metrics as to what you've accomplished in each of these research labs. Show that you think like a scientist. Now remember, my key tip for this is not to show achievements, but to connect the dots. Start with talking about what sparked your interest in science, explain how your experiences shape your path, and finish with a long-term vision as a physician scientist. Now let's talk about the MD-PhD interview. It's usually two full days where you'll meet with both physicians and PhD faculty. There are three major components that you'll want to be mindful of during the interview day. The first thing is research questions. You'll be asked in detail to present and defend your research. Expect deep questions about methods, limitations, and future directions. Secondly, you'll face questions about clinical exposure, your motivation for medicine, and ethical scenarios which you'll usually have during an MMI. Finally, and maybe the most important, is program fit. Committees want to know why you want to do a degree, why now, and why their program. So make sure you have a really strong answer and one that makes sense that aligns with the committee's decisions and also their values as well. Now be mindful that during this entire process, they're gonna be assessing your personality. If you come across as one dimensional or even arrogant, you probably won't get in. So make sure that you're passionate, collaborative, and intellectually curious so that people can know that you'll thrive in both the lab and the clinic as well. Okay, this is the most important part of the video, my three key strategies. Number one is have the research chops. At top five MD-PhD programs, almost every admit has multiple years of serious research, often with publications or presentations. If you don't have one yet, spend more time developing yourself as an applicant. Get some research, get some publications so that you feel more confident going to the MD-PhD cycle. Number two is have a cohesive story. Your clinical experience, your research, your essays should all be motivated to connect a single narrative about why you need both the MD and the PhD. Now, my third piece of advice is to ace the interview with balance. Be excited, be bold, but don't be overbearing. Programs are training colleagues that they'll want to work with for eight years. They want people who are sharp and enjoyable to collaborate with. So be positive, be humble, and most importantly, be curious. And that's all I have for this video on how you too can get into a top five MD-PhD program. It's a long, difficult process, but if you have strong research, a compelling story, and a collaborative mindset, you can absolutely get there. If you want personalized support, you can book a free discovery call with me and my team at Ivy League Consults. We've helped students get into Harvard, Stanford, and Yale, and we'd love to do the same for you. The link is below in the descriptions. Best of luck. You got this and follow along for more.